Hello everybody and welcome back to mainland China. Welcome to Chengdu East Railway Station. Today is a travel day. We're actually going to be taking our very first high-speed train through the Sichuan province of China. We're heading to a new city today. We're on the way to Chongqing for the very first time. It's another brand new city for us. First city was Chengdu, now we're on to Chongqing. And by the way, I just want to preface this. We are traveling during probably one of the most popular holidays here in China. It is coming up, or it's the day before actually, May Day which is Labor Day, which is actually kind of a worldwide holiday, as many of you will know. But yeah, there's millions of people traveling. This station is very, very busy, and I'm sure it's only going to get busier. But we're very excited because we're going to be taking a first-class train today on the high-speed railway of China. Yes, we were very, very lucky to even be able to book those tickets. Now, we booked it, I have to preface this, we booked it, I believe, three or four weeks in advance because we knew that we wanted to take the train this day. We didn't know it was Labor Day, but we managed to get tickets. I'm sure if we would have booked this like two days before, there would have been zero tickets. So first class it is, and uh, I'm super excited. Just have a look at how busy it is here. It's pretty early in the morning as well. Let's go on an adventure. By the way, you guys, this is not sponsored in any way, but we booked our tickets in bef uh, beforehand through chip.com and um, that was the only way we managed to make it work while being outside of the country. I do believe there's another app that you can use. It's called like Railway 0206 random, <laughs> random numbers and uh, yeah, we didn't manage to book it through there. We managed to book it through um, trip.com and uh, yeah, this is the overview of the station right now. Um, it sort of looks like you don't need to get your tickets printed out, at least from uh, the research that we did beforehand. So what you do or what you want to do is basically uh, figure out where the train is, which is which might be a hurdle right now. And then you just go to the gate that your train is at and then you present your passport from what I understood. So you don't actually need a physical ticket. But uh, yeah. What is the hour ticket number? It's uh, eight. What? It was. It was up there, just literally as you turned the camera around. But then it changed. Oh. But I, I did see it, and uh, it's starting. Oh, to maybe show. now. Ten. G eight six eleven. So it's A thirteen B thirteen. A thirteen B thirteen. That yes, means yes. we need to yeah go one two three four five six gates down. Yep. So let's. Uh, wow, there's so many people. I don't know if you can see that quite literally like a sea of people in this yeah. station right now. So we I'm need not to... sure if this is normal or if this is just because the day it is, but it's crazy. I mean, we sort of need to get through all of those people just to get to our gate. Um, I mean, just judging from the size of this railway station, I kind of feel like it's probably year-round uh, busy railway station, but probably not as busy as this one because look at the amount of people just trying to figure out where their train is leaving from and uh, also queuing up at the gates seem to be a lot of people and also um, both of us are super super excited to be traveling on the bullet train apparently this bullet train is only going to take like under two hours like maybe one and a half hours to go all the way to Chongqing and it's like going over 300 kilometers per hour so yeah that's a bit crazy but we are very excited to actually feel that <laughs> Talk about busy, wow, quite literally, a few or many thousand people that are currently in here. We are separated into different uh, lines here, so there's residents in one queue, non-residents, which is us in another queue, and then business class, so keep in mind to look out for that if you are traveling on the rail, uh, China Rail. Sorry if I'm stumbling over my words, it's just very, very overwhelming the amount of people that are here right now, but nonetheless, a very smooth process. Wow, okay. The train looks very cool. Looking for carriage number nine. 
This is 10. Don't know if it's back or front or... <laughs> I can just see the carriage number 10. Yeah. We need number 9. Let's see. By the way, we still didn't have to uh, print out our tickets or anything, so this passport is fine. This is 11, we need to go the other way. All right, I think we're at the very front of the train. That's cool. It's two trains here. Yeah. yeah. First class. Did not expect to be traveling in first class, but uh, they were the tickets that were left for us, so we booked them. Very excited to experience this for the very first time. It's a very beautiful train. I love it. Need the tickets? Oh, okay. I think at least we need to show her something. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which numbers do we have? I believe we are in 8A and 8C. Okay. So, four, five. Oh, the seats are really wide. Look comfortable. 8A, 8C here on the right. I was thinking that we didn't sit together because there's no B, but uh, we actually do sit together. We do. But we have, looks like we have a sort of hindered view. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> you want to sit on the, okay. Oh my god, you guys. Oh, oh there's so much space. Check out how much space we have. Yeah, true. It's wow. only our bags really that are blocking the way now, but um, there's a lot of leg space. Like, like, I'm very, very tall and I can stretch my leg out. Yeah, just for reference. Luke is uh, six foot two or about 188, 190 basically in meters. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of space. And you also can pull down this guy here. So, uh, and there uh, to put your feet on top basically. Sorry, I'm a little bit. <laughs> it was a lot to take in, um, sort of early, earlier ish in the morning. Um, I don't know, there's so many people out there, it's kind of crazy. It's I was a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> really, really intense the amount of uh, sort of people that are outside, but I have to say that the process overall is very smooth. Yeah. Um, I think if there's that many people in a different country, for example, like for example in Europe, uh, the railway system quite literally or the railway station I think and the staff would kind of definitely be overwhelmed and uh, not really know what to do but yeah. I think the staff here in this situation handled it pretty well and the way that the system is set up is um, quite straightforward if you if you don't speak Mandarin if you don't speak Chinese it can be difficult because uh, we have to basically translate everything like yeah. actively as you go so make sure please make sure that you have some type of a sim card that you can connect to the internet and connect to your translator yeah. because if you can't you're not really gonna know what's going on that's the only thing that's the thing like you need to know which um, channel for example to go through and there's signs that say um, national channel like a national ID card and then it's like foreign and then it's like business class or something but the foreign car ID card channel doesn't say it in English, so it only says it in Chinese. And uh, obviously, if you do, if you cannot read Chinese, you're not going to be able to know where you have to go. Um, but yeah, we managed to translate it and then understand where we need to go because we cannot just uh, scan our ID card. Basically, what well, how it works for Chinese people is they just uh, scan their ID card. I believe maybe there's a chip in there or something in the ID card, and they can walk through the gate and it's fine. For us, uh, there needs to be a person basically physically looking at the passport and then letting you through. But if I found it very interesting the process that they did so they basically took our passport they scanned our passport in their system and when they scanned it it showed the seat that we had reserved based off of our ID so that was very interesting and uh, cool to see and there was a nice uh, staff worker that was there to assist us with that as well so it's very straightforward and very safe as well I believe it's, it would be very difficult to get on the train without a ticket oh yeah yeah you're not you're not getting anywhere near the train um, if you don't have a ticket that's for sure which is not the case 
uh, in the country kind of where, where I come from. Uh, a lot of people sort of figure out ways of getting onto trains without tickets or figure out how to bring things on and stuff like that. They figure a way around it because the security is not so tight. But here, in terms of uh, security and safeness, it's very, very strong. And in terms of overall staff and the amount of people that are here working and are assisting people, it's amazing. And yeah, the experience so far, other than the gigantic crowds of people, I think it has been very, very positive and overall a great experience. And I cannot wait for this train to start because I can't, this is my first time, genuinely my first time on like a very like high speed train. Naomi has been on them before in Germany. I have no idea how this compares to uh, German trains. I'm sure probably similar. I'm not sure if it's I think even this faster. Train, this train is going a little bit faster. A little bit it. faster. Like okay. the German ones kind of go up to 300 kilometers per hour in certain areas, not in every, not in all of the areas, because yeah. there's people living there and with the noise pollution, so it doesn't go that fast all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think this one actually might be going that this fast the entire way to Chongqing. Yeah, we have quite a bit of a distance. I think I have no idea now how, how far away Chongqing actually is. But we do have quite a way to go and it's only taking us like a little bit over an hour to get there so that's crazy by the way we only figured it out yesterday if you're looking for a maps app that works in china yeah. just use if and you have an iphone uh, use apple maps it works fine it even knows the transportation system and the metro lines and everything so that's really good i didn't i didn't know it until just this morning basically it's very very true we <laughs> tried obviously in the beginning to use google maps but you can't use that here so just download apple maps if you do have an iphone as naomi said it it's works very two, very well 260 kilometers 260 kilometers in a straight line if you wouldn't go left right obviously it would be oh no 291 sorry 290 290 yeah. kilometers well so yeah roughly just under 300 kilometers in around an hour or so yeah that will give you an idea as to how fast we're going to be going in a car it would take you about three and a half hours it says online cool give you guys a look inside of the train here first class uh, i have to say as naomi said the seats are very very spacious the leg room is fantastic the temperature in here is room temperature roughly around yeah 23 degrees celsius 23 24 um so it doesn't get much better and the train we left one minute early it's already starting so it's one minute it, i don't know it's, it's exactly, exactly 10 now. 10 40. literally left the second of the time of departure 10 40 automatically just went boom that is precision right there. There's also a lot of different QR codes on the seat. I'm still trying to figure yeah. out what they're for. You have QR codes that are kind of like dotted around the train. It might be Wi-Fi or stuff like that. Who knows? Let's have a look out the window. Beautiful. Time to say goodbye to Chengdu and make our way to a new Chinese city. Well, and also, by the way, this city, if you guys don't know, I'm sure a lot of you will, Chongqing has over 30 million people. So we're on our way to quite literally a mega city right now. The train, uh, what I just scanned, literally tells you exactly where you are, when you are going to be arriving at certain areas. And I think you can uh, report a lost item, you can uh, order a taxi, and maybe you can even order food. I don't know. Wow. We need okay. to figure it out. I think it's gonna be a little bit of clicking around. <laughs> so it's like an all in one app that's on your armrest. Interesting. Very excited for the for the views along the way here. Let's see what we can see. The name of the station we're heading to, by the way, is called Sha Pingba.
Uh, I think it's a black tea. It smells like a black tea, yeah? No sugar as well. It's nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice no and cozy. Non sweet black tea. That's, uh, that's delicious. I like the, the cup as well. Cool. It's also just about right. It's not too strong. A lot of times the black teas, black teas and jasmine teas, they run quite strong. Yeah. <laughs> on the Asian continent, so the sun is really nice. It's very, very true. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you get a black tea and uh, it's so strong that it's like very, very bitter and it just kind of like gives you like a real kick. But uh, yeah, this one is pretty mellow. It's also not boiling hot as well. It's just lukewarm, like myself. Jesus Christ. <sighs> and by the way, <laughs> we have already uh, gotten gotten up to, I believe, well over 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, sometimes it will flash the speed up on uh, the little sort of screen that's overhead there. And uh, yeah, I think it read just around 340 or 300 uh, plus anyways. And you can definitely see that out the window. Recovering ground very, very quickly. And one thing that I will say that uh, you can see out the window already is just how green and beautiful China is. Yeah, it currently says there uh, 346 kilometers per hour is what we're currently going at. So. There you go. <laughs> I hope you can see that it's kind of a little bit in the distance there, but... Oh, now we're in a tunnel. Now we're out of a tunnel. See how quickly we went through the tunnel? <laughs> it's crazy. It's really in the tunnel, crazy. Out of the tunnel, into the forest, into the city, out yeah. of the city. <laughs> we're literally just buzzing past like tons. We're covering tons of ground. But yeah, you can see how uh, green and beautiful and luscious uh, a lot of the landscape is here in China. Just have a look. Very, very beautiful. China obviously being one of one of the largest countries in the world in land size and in population. It's genuinely just massive. Uh, so it's pretty sort of crazy to think that we're currently just sitting on a 340 kilometer per hour train flying around that country and Naomi has a box of blueberries. Eating blueberries from the from the area of uh, from the Sichuan province I believe uh, from the area of Chengdu it's actually really really nice blueberries I, I was missing blueberries a ton because it's difficult to get by berries all over Southeast Asia where we have been for the past uh, two years I want to say one and a half years so now being uh, in East uh, in East Asia uh, we finally managed to get some berries nice yeah. this is a very overall positive situation so far for sure we were we were worried actually about getting when we were getting on the train sometimes uh, a lot of asian countries what they do is they turn up the air conditioning to the point where it's like a fridge inside the train but here it is genuinely just room temperature like i said 24 degrees it's actually very pleasant it doesn't feel too hot and it doesn't feel too cold so that's another positive for this i brought an extra scarf and an extra hoodie just in case it's gonna yeah. be too cold <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna win. sip our tea and enjoy this beautiful view getting our first sort of glimpses as well of Chinese villages which is very very interesting to see it's great to be able to see that uh, sort of contrast between the large mega cities like Chengdu that we just spent a good while in and we got to explore a lot of it uh, we would love to get out and explore the more rural parts of China which we might make time to do we have obviously limited time here in terms of our visa but we'll see what we can do maybe oh, we're inside the tunnel again but a lot of, a lot of these uh, villages just look fascinating because you kind of it looks like you in the cities you're it feels like you're like 30 or 40 or 50 years ahead of a lot of Europe a lot of America it's very advanced very very modern and then in a lot of the villages it's kind of like you go back you know almost like 50 60 70 years uh, it gets a lot more primitive a lot more down to earth a lot more sort of less technology 
and uh, farming and stuff like that so it's very very interesting to see that very stark contrast just outside and just in between two mega cities like this I just uh, researched about this train that we're on right now it's called the Fu Xing train and um, the usual like average uh, velocity is 350 kilometers per hour which is also what we are approximately going right now so it's like 346 343 kilometers per hour something like that it was designed to go 400 kilometers per hour wow. and the record is 420 kilometers per hour so yeah. in theory it drives a lot faster than it should go you know <laughs> let's just hope we're not gonna go 420 420 kilometers that's incredibly fast yeah uh, anything really over sort of 350 I feel like is just pretty crazy to be able to be like sitting inside of and it's just I don't know it blows me away because this is my very first time on, ever on a high-speed train and going at this speed I think we're somewhere roughly around 330 or 340 uh, right now it doesn't feel like it at all you're literally just uh, very very stable you're, there's no very little shaking very little movement uh, people are just a lot of people are asleep for example very comfortable and yeah this is just unbelievable and I love I cannot speak I cannot speak enough about the views of the different villages and the different sort of lakes and rivers and the nature uh, of China. It's something that um, if and when we do come back to visit China, I would like to try and come to a specifically sort of rural area and uh, go into like the ancient villages and explore a lot of those because I think that's where like the real sort of historical heart of China is lying really funny we just literally blasted through a tunnel and both of our ears popped and uh, yeah Naomi was saying that that's literally what happens when you go into a tunnel at like we are right now my ears just popped again you blast through a tunnel at like 350 kilometers an hour all of that sort of pressure back in a tunnel again all of that sort of pressure builds up <laughs> and, uh, we, keep, we keep going through tunnels repeatedly but yeah all of that pressure sort of builds up and passes through uh, an enclosed place like a tunnel and then yeah there's nowhere for that pressure to go so it pops out of your ears but yeah that's pretty an interesting feeling it's something that i have not felt unless i'm like in an airplane or like going up really fast in an elevator i always assumed that it had to do with elevation not uh, the pressure of just literally acceleration like we are right now but yeah i cannot believe our surroundings right now i do feel like we're sort of going towards uh hilly and mountainy areas or we're going through the hilly mountainy areas which would also explain why we're going through so many tunnels True, and, uh, yeah. the landscape is really green here and there you see some rice paddies which is really nice and then in the distance you sort of see the rolling hills it's really nice oh it's beautiful have a look at this <laughs> oh. where's the tunnel have a look <laughs> would take 
much longer if we were to go to an airport and do all that type of stuff as well. I also think it's very interesting that it seems like that the uh, train is built into nature, whereas, for example, if you look at Germany, it seems like there has been a lot of sort of geoengineering done where the hills are flattened. And I mean, we do have tunnels, but like not that many. And where here, it seems like the train just goes straight, no matter what comes into its way. And there's a lot of uh, tunnels being built, or a lot of bridges and so on. And uh, oh. <laughs> And the tunnel just sort of seems to be going straight through it, no matter what there is. Uh, and I find that concept really interesting. Yeah, that's very, very true, actually. Uh, it doesn't seem like much has been changed to fit the structure of where the train is going. It's just literally straight line. So very, very interesting and uh, incredible experience overall so far. By the way, as well, you can pretty much permanently tell if the bathroom is available because there's a green color that's showing of the restroom sign. So you know if it's available or you know if it's not because I believe it turns red when someone goes into the bathroom. So that's cool to know too. Well, guys, it feels like we literally just left uh, two or three minutes ago, but funnily enough, it's been roughly around one hour for almost a 300 kilometer journey what an interesting experience and what an incredibly fast experience and uh yeah welcome to Chongqing, china i suppose i'll try and give you guys a look out the window this is our first little look at Chongqing. this is an absolutely massive city with around 30 million or so people like you said so yeah it is sprawling in size it already looks like uh, Chongqing seems to be a little bit more built up at least in the outskirts of the city of course we haven't seen the city center yet but right now we're sort of I want to say in the suburbs probably of Chongqing and uh, yeah it's very high condo buildings um, which is super interesting to see because it's such a sort of contrast from Chengdu I feel like in yep. Chengdu you had sort of more spread out of a vibe obviously there were skyscrapers too but <coughs> overall i want to say it was a little bit more spread out where here it seems to be very high yeah i am expecting Chongqing to be a little bit less laid back i guess than chengdu chengdu was an incredibly mm. slow paced city considering the fact that there is like 16 17 million people there it was very very laid back and not stressful at all We'll see what Chongqing has to hold for us, but uh, yeah, this train experience, guys, was uh, very, very positive, I have to say, in terms of like value for money, the uh, quality of the sort of the seating, the leg room, the cleanliness, the speed, and uh, just free how tea. sort of time efficient it is, the free tea as well. That's the most important for Naomi, of course. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, very, very, very good, good value for money. Very good value. Yeah. It also says online that Chongqing is um, supposed to be a little bit less westernized or whatever than um, Chengdu. And I'm really curious to see if we can actually point that out in our stay in Chongqing. Because I'm like, it just says it's less westernized, but it doesn't say in what capacity. So we need yeah. to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, for now, guys, welcome to Sha Pingba. I hope I'm saying that right. It's in Chongqing. What a beautiful train that is! Wow! <laughs> Such a beautiful and sleek design. Well, there's just as many, if not more, people in this station as there was <laughs> in the last station in Chengdu. Very, very, very busy. This is exactly sort of what I imagined travel days in China to be like, although I'm very positively surprised overall with that train experience, but this is how I imagined it in terms of like volume of people. Uh, it is very, very busy. 
I wanted to say I didn't expect it to be like this at all, but yeah, in terms of volume of people, I definitely expected it to be like this. But I didn't expect the trains to be quite this modern, so uh, yeah. yeah, that was a little bit of a positive surprise. Yeah. Very happy with the train experience. It's true, yeah, I did not expect the train to be as good as it was. It was, I think, the best train experience that we've had in a foreign country and we've been traveling full-time now for just over three years so that says quite a lot we've seen a lot of countries and we've been on a lot of different railway systems and uh, i think this is number one so far wow the crowds are getting bigger <laughs> yeah i do think that you're sort of pushed out now out of the exit yeah. i was sort of thinking to walk around the station maybe and have a look around but i don't think you can actually do that I yeah. think you just have to leave sort of similar to an airport, you know. <laughs> Just to let you guys know, uh, we had been queuing sort of here on the left side and um, weren't aware that we had to queue in one specific area again, like uh, sort of when we got in, just to have an actual agent scan our passport. So uh, here it's again the same situation. All of these lines are sort of for uh, Chinese citizens and then you have one guy in an orange vest that is uh, scanning foreign nationals in and out of the train station basically we didn't know we had been queuing for like 10 minutes on the wrong gate so yeah we're uh, right now on the right track hopefully <laughs> Okay, okay. so we are trying to pay with Alipay uh, the way we have been doing it as usual but the machines here in uh, Chongqing are not actually accepting foreign Alipay cards credit cards that are connected to Alipay that are foreign basically so uh, very very difficult not really sure what we are going to do but I do believe we have to go to a human uh, there might be some uh, cash payment option there uh, I, m I might have a little bit of cash left. I'm not really 100% sure. Would you mind holding the camera? Well, that is uh, the first sort of not convenient thing that we've run into so far here in China. Well, maybe that's what it's meant with uh, it's less westernized. Yeah, true. It worked very, very seamlessly in Chengdu with Alipay everywhere. We just used it with quite literally everything. But uh, here we're already sort of meeting a roadblock, so... I kept thinking that we didn't have enough money in the account, but we did, so... I yeah. See if we can pay with cash, maybe. Cash pay. Well, let's see what happens. Take it. Oh. System is processing. Hey, we have tickets. That's a bit aggressive. Okay. <laughs> So that's a quick fix, at least we know that if we're going to be using the metro that we should take out some cash. Keep that in mind guys, if you are foreigners and you're planning on visiting Chongqing, oh. keep that in mind. It gave, me, it gave me change in banknotes. You even get change in notes, there you go. Never had that happening to me before. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you have tickets. Just so you know guys, you're not allowed to fub. No fubbing. No fubbing allowed. No fubbing allowed on this train. <laughs> No phoning, maybe? No phoning. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the inner workings of the Chongqing Metro Station. Or the Chongqing sort of metro line, I guess you could say. Is this our direction? Uh, stop 28. Stop 20, stop 28, that's us. Nice one.
We're both super, super excited to be in Chongqing right now. Second largest city in the world, I have to repeat that. It's unimaginable amount of people for us. The train experience was super nice. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, but yeah, just really excited to be exploring Chongqing now. Yeah, the metro seems to be uh, just, just as convenient and clean as the Chengdu metro station. So that's a big, big plus. So for now, guys. My name is Luke. My name is Naomi. We're the two mad explorers. And this is your reminder to keep exploring. See you guys in the next China adventure. Shishi for watching. Shishi. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.